find something that you like. If you don't really like the bike you get, you're not going to ride it as much. You're not going to want to ride it. You know? Get a bike that has a cool color that you like. Or it, it sounds a way that you like. You just like the, the look, the face on it, whatever. The headlights. doesn't matter what it is. Enjoy it. Today kind of turned into more of a more of a bike work day than a bike ride day, which sucks because it's gorgeous outside for February. But last night my uh, my brake lever, like the the pivot bolt on it, uh, came loose, fell off. So obviously not a whole lot of stunting going on. Topic for today is beginner bikes it's probably something i've talked about before but i'm gonna talk about it again because my opinions may have changed a little bit and i get a lot of comments like hey i'm such and such years old i'm i have this budget i want to learn how to ride you know what should i get i'm like i can't uh I can't tell you exactly what you should or shouldn't do, but I can give you some tips and advice on uh, what bikes might be good, what bikes might not be as good. I guess the first category of things that are important is like, number one, what's your budget? Um, you know, you don't really want to budget shop for a bike if you don't have to, but you don't want to spend money unnecessarily either. So for the sake of this video and for <laughs> thumbnail, I'm going to be focusing on a $3,000 budget. So you got three grand, you want to get something going first place you go is Facebook Marketplace. That's where you're going to find all the private party sales and whatnot. And usually on there, you know, you can search around and see, well, okay, like, maybe I could buy this fucking Fireblade or a ZX-10 for three grand, but it's clapped out and I hear an R6. Hello. But it's clapped out. Um, and you don't need that much power. That's a big thing. A lot of people say you can start on a 1000, which you totally 100% can. Um, I think if you start out on a bike that's too big, it kind of ruins the, the fun of it a little bit. Right? Because part of the fun of, of getting into bikes is like, okay, I can buy a, a 300 or a 400 or whatever and then I have somewhere to go after that you know then I, I get to a point where I kind of feel like I can master that bike I can move on and go up to a bigger bike if you just start at the biggest bike you can really get there's nowhere to go and it's going to take a lot longer for you to really master that machine if ever you know so enjoy the the aspect of upgrading bikes so you're on facebook marketplace you're looking around find something reliable cool part about beginner bikes is that all of them are pretty much the same they all function the same they have very similar engines um, similar ways that they're built so they're all going to be fairly reliable usually those bikes don't have a whole lot of miles either because people buy them and then they learn on them they master them pretty quickly and then they're like okay i want a 600 now which means you as a buyer can go okay like sweet i found a, a ninja 400 with i don't know 5,000 miles on it and yeah you know it got dropped in a parking lot that's standard but you can negotiate might be hard to find a newer year for that price but you can totally do it um, 
avoid weird title stuff. If you're ever buying a bike, doesn't matter if it's a beginner bike or uh, an advanced bike or whatever, just avoid anything with crazy weird title restrictions and whatever, or it doesn't have a title or it's a salvage or whatever, just avoid it. You can find something better. I know the bike market and the car market is always changing a lot. So, you know, prices might change and it might be hard to find something for three grand or whatever, but I'm sure if you search around enough, you can find one, especially if you're willing to drive further out to get it. You could also go the route of the 650s and the 700s. Um, 650s and 700s are great. They're awesome. It's a very similar engine model build uh, than 300s and 400s. Very, very similar, but you have a lot more power. So a 650 is not the same as a 600. It's something people confuse all the time. They're not the same. A 600 Super Sport has four cylinders while a 650 typically has two outside of maybe like the the 636 right what that means if you don't understand engines and whatnot is that four cylinders you're gonna make a lot more horsepower and all your torque is gonna come in at the higher end of your RPMs so that's why you hear those bikes get rung all the way out because that's where they're making the majority of their power so keep that in mind 650 not the same as 600 as long as the engine is not an inline four you'll be golden you have a lot more torque this thing's super torquey the r7 same engine very torquey um, I know the Aprilia, what is it, the RS660, beautiful bike, gorgeous, um, expensive, but gorgeous. And I would imagine it feels very similar to something like this. They have a really cool sound. They don't sound as great when they're 300, but a Parallel Twin 700 or a Parallel Twin 650, that can be a pretty mean sounding machine. The only thing with your 650s and your 700s and all that is that they're just a little bit more power, a little bit more weight, a little bit more expensive too. So you gotta have a little bit more self-control. It's kinda hard to like really hurt yourself by like looping or something on a, on a 300. Like as a beginner, it's just not very likely that that'll happen. It's not impossible, you could 100% do it, but it's far more likely on something like this that's super torquey, that you don't have the throttle control down yet, and you ring it out too fast, you dump the clutch, whatever, and then you fly backwards. So keep that in mind, you gotta have some level of personal control over your bike. What are we doing? Oh, hello. It also depends a lot on what type of riding you want to do. If you want to do a dirt and street, you want to have a street legal dirt bike, sweet. You know, you can find some some sweet KTM's and Supermotos and all that. Uh, that three grand budget might be a little bit hard to find with a, a newer one. You might end up having to get a carbureted one, but that's not the end of the world. It's your first bike. Something like this, you might have a harder time finding under three grand. I bought this bike uh, in the very beginning of 2022. Jan yeah, no, I bought it like Christmas, the day after Christmas, on in 2021. So this bike is about two years old in in my possession. And I got it for 3,800 bucks. It had a few problems and weird things with it, but like you can't, you know, of course you gotta expect that when you are buying a bike for that kind of price. But a 300, dude, easy, easy money, you can do that. You can 
get an even clapped out one for like mm, two grand, 2,500 if it's real clapped out. So dirt bikes, I would stick with sport bikes because they're not really sport bikes. They look sporty and they look sweet, but they're not crazy, uh, crazy power or anything. So you get the cool styling, but you get a really great, reliable beginner bike, especially if you go with one of the big four Japanese brands, you're gonna be just fine on that thing. So street riding, I would 100% do that. If you wanna maybe go more of the cruiser route, you like that styling, something like the Rebel 300, I don't know if they're still making them as uh, 300s or 500s or whatever, you could probably find something like that. at a pretty decent price, especially if it's a few years old. Personally, I wouldn't recommend going with uh, a Chinese bike. You're just, you're better off going Japanese, uh, at least European. You know, I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with European. Everybody says the reliability sucks, but you know, I've never owned one, so I can't really speak to it. I hate riding this thing on this section of the highway. I feel like I'm just ringing it out too much at fucking 75, but. Thing, you know you get a, a Japanese bike you take care of that thing it'll run forever like just stick with Japanese you'll be you'll be just fine you gotta search on Facebook marketplace a little bit you might have to drive out a little bit there's some red flags don't go for a bike that has title issues don't go for a bike that has engine issues don't go for a bike that has crazy mileage um, you know it might help to bring a buddy with you that knows more about bikes than you do You're like hey man can you like look this thing over for me so I know I'm making a good decision with my few thousand dollars it's not it's not a small investment it's not massive right but you don't want to mess around really not fucking with this wind And if you want to do off-road, you don't want to do street, dirt bikes are surprisingly cheap. They're not crazy expensive, especially if you want to go with like an older two-stroke. Two-strokes are pretty reliable if you take care of them, do the maintenance on them. It's not crazy hard to learn how to do the maintenance on them. So you could get yourself a little, a little 125 if you're an adult or if you're a little bit smaller of a person, maybe go with a smaller sized engine. Um, or, I mean, shit, you could go the 250 route, but it, it might not be the, the best move off the jump. So, overall, my, like, my top pick, Ninja 300. Ninja 300, all the way. Great, great bike. Great first bike. Good-looking bike, especially, I, personally, I like the older, uh, the last generation, not this current generation. Just personal preference. You can totally buy from a dealer too. These bikes aren't expensive MSRP. Uh, MSRP is somewhere around 5,500. Uh, but you could certainly score a $3,000 Ninja 300, Ninja 400 that's a few years old. You don't need to have a super pretty bike. You get a bike that looks like a sport bike, you know, you'll be happy. You'll feel, it'll feel fun. You'll learn a lot. It won't be too much for you. You're not gonna hurt yourself. If you're a little bit of a larger human and you have some more self-control with your with your right hand, you know, maybe try a 700, try a 650. Is that a Frenchie? Hello, Frenchie. This one's a little bit shorter. Honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot to really say. I think it's, it's all pretty self-explanatory. You know, you do just a little bit of research, you'll be able to find a good bike for you, but I would highly recommend a Ninja 300 or a Ninja 400. Even if you think you can handle a little bit more, it doesn't hurt to play it safe. 
get yourself a pretty looking bike and get something that will last you a long time that you can learn on that you can make mistakes on so when you want to get a bigger bike something like this those mistakes aren't as big right if you hop on a you know this this bike isn't even a, a huge powerful bike or anything it's certainly more powerful and torquey than the 300 but if we're talking compared to a 600 or a 1000 there's a good chance you could really fuck yourself up on one of those so learning that throttle control is crucial and having a, a cheap bike that you're not worried about dropping that will be reliable and easy to sort parts for if you break and still be a good looking pretty bike like that checks all the boxes in my opinion But again, I mean, the Ninja 300 compared to the R3, very similar, very, very similar. Compared to the, I don't know, Suzuki still making a 250? I don't know if they are. I, I wouldn't go Suzuki. That might be the only brand I would omit a little bit. I would go Yamaha, Kawasaki, or Honda. Uh, I think Honda's still making what? They're making a CBR 500. They have like a CB 300R, but they're making a CBR 500R. Those are great too. It's a little, again, it's, I think that would be a really cool happy medium between something like this and something like a 300. Because the, there isn't a, I don't want to call it a massive difference, but this is not a 300. A 500 might be just a little bit safer, but you can get a little bit more out of it than a 300. But like, all in all, enjoy the process of learning and upgrading and trying out a ton of different bikes. That's that's the fun part of this. Don't end your journey right when it starts by getting a, a 1000. I gotta go get some lot time in. It's too nice. Well, hopefully my uh, rear brake doesn't act up. Knock on carbon. What's up, boss? Find something that you like. If you don't really like the bike you get, you're not going to ride it as much. You're not going to want to ride it. Get a bike that has a cool color that you like, or it, it sounds a way that you like, or you just like the, the look, the face on it, whatever, the headlights, doesn't matter what it is, enjoy it. And don't be, don't be too afraid of it once you start. You start getting super afraid and super sketched out, you're never gonna learn. This shit is dangerous, but I mean, if you're in a parking lot, you're not gonna get hurt. I'm sorry, you maybe you will get hurt, but you're not gonna die. You'll be all right. You'll get back up. That's why you wear a helmet. Wear one of these.